Welcome back everybody to Huobi Global Live. My name is Darko, your host this evening and tonight we are joined by Dr. Naveen of Inerdi, the CEO and founder of Inerdi. Welcome to the stream. How are you feeling today, my brother? Feeling very good, Darko. Thank you very much. Very excited. A lovely, beautiful morning in London. Joining you from London. Oh, nice. So it's a nice sunny day over there. Very nice sunny day, which is very rare for London, but yeah, we have it. Awesome, and it's a pleasure to have you here, and a pleasure as well to have everybody watching from all over the world on the official Huobi Global app and on YouTube Live. If you're watching, please tell us where you're watching from in the live chat box and smash that like button. Grab yourself some drink, grab yourself some snack, and enjoy the ride. Yeah, yeah. So, Dr. Naveen, or should I call you Doc? <laughs> you, you can call whatever makes it easier for you to say yeah i think it's more friendly you know one-on-one -on -one friends i'll call you doc so doc okay. um before we get into a series of questions tonight i'd like to first start off by asking you could you give us a bit of a background on yourself tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into crypto and why so um my early career when i was in studying in university was a professional athlete so i was a sportsman oh nice um, i was in yeah, I was uh, in uh, Swiss national team. I represented Switzerland into um, various international uh, meetings, uh, European Championship, World Championship. For which sport? Um, sorry? I was few which, which, which sport? Well, guess which? Soccer. You can have two guesses. Soccer. No. Okay. No. Cricket. No. All right. I failed. What was it? <laughs> Freestyle wrestling. Oh really? I'm a huge. I used to be a huge wrestling fan growing up as a kid. Yeah, you what? can imagine. But you, the wrestling which you were doing was was the other one we do the Olympic style wrestling. Ah, uh, yes. The wrestlers then go to WWE where the kids are fans. So yeah, freestyle wrestling. So I started my early career with the um, sports, and um, through all the journey of of studying, um, I was um, outstanding sportsman, and then I went to being professional athlete. Preparing for Olympics, um, I had been 10 years professional athlete. Mm -hmm. um, finished my studies, I finished my doctorate into sports science. On um, the focus was on sports injuries because being a combat sports, you have to go through a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. And um, at the same time, I um, started an IT company where we were doing uh, software development for telecommunications. So it was internal part of the telecommunications um, where we were doing the billing softwares and uh, the calculation of the number of minutes where telecom operators use. So that's where the IT starts. Then um, in 2015, I got introduced to Bitcoin by a German lawyer um, who wrote a book about Bitcoin and that's how the, the crypto thing started. Um, me and my co-founder, um, Ivan, we together go a long way back. Um, Ivan hails from Serbia, which is a country known for actually um, the top developers in the world. Good projects, or one of the top projects from Web 3.0 comes from, from Serbia. You name oh, it, wow. Polygon, Solana's uh, uh, core team, Cardano. Serbians are considered, at least in Europe, number one in, in, in development in IT. Oh, wow. um, so Ivan comes from there, and we have a full in-house team. We have three offices within Serbia. And we have a very, very strong technical team there, which is the driving force behind the Henry blockchain. Um, so the journey of the crypto started in 2015 when the first time I read the book about Bitcoin yep. um, was quite a, a eye opener. And then we started following it. Uh, we saw the whole um, the whole wave of ICOs in 2017. Yeah, that was and crazy. Crash. Yeah. Yes, that was. There is a lot to learn, you know, a lot to learn if you follow the space. Um, I'm sure you have your own journey uh, from those times. Similar to and yours, from the sounds of it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So most of us uh, came in, in those 14, 15, 16 time, you know. Yes. Before that, it was it was, uh, it was was really very few people in the world who, who knew about that. That's true. But, um, yeah, so starting from there, 2015, 16, me and Ivan, we built a health, a health tech software where we were also doing the digitalization of health data. So we've been always been in the in the data part and having a good solid team of all the good developers, uh, we came to a point that everything they'd make or every programming they do, they need a database. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Um, and every one of them is using a centralized database. And they're like, there isn't anyone or any player or any blockchain which is addressing the problem of the data management in uh, Web 3.0 space. So we should definitely look into that. Mm. And that's how the, the thought started. And then we spent a full one year of researching that um, what are the players, what are they doing, what are different protocols. Um, and that's how the, I mean, that was the early start of, of idea to build something like Einry. Mm. So you started off by reading a book on Bitcoin and that's the book actually got you interested in the space, you said. So what was the turning point? What was the one thing that stood out in your mind that you said, you know what? I got to get involved in this industry. So <clears throat> what happened is Bitcoin was one part. This is the, so it's a, it's a mother of all the all the crypto space. Mm. But I was not sure that time how sustainable this this thing is. Is it just a hype? Is it just one virtual uh, coin? Uh, but when then 2017 18 those projects um, Ethereum, EOS and all those started coming and building the, the blockchains and then the top of the, the layer ones, then there were decentralized applications coming. Yeah. That was a tough point when you said, hey, just hold on a second. This thing is going to grow and this thing is going to change the way we interact with Internet. This thing is 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 something I think after the invention of Internet is the biggest invention is the, the blockchain space. So you immediately saw the potential in the very early stages before most people even thought of seeing the potential there. You saw it straight away, right? Yes, and mm. and adding to that, I think we are still in very early stages. Mm. I mean, there are people who think, oh, you know, we were in, we know about Bitcoin in 2012, um, and now it's it's already completely different. And I tell them at the point of building something. A platform, an infra project, or even GameFi or any other projects, I still think we are in very early stages. You know, we're just starting off. It's in 10 years, we're going to be in a completely different space. Oh, so much has happened. And as you would have seen, a lot has happened. Many ups, many downs, a lot of positive, a lot of mm -hmm. negative situations. There are companies that have grown and boomed, and a lot of others have just completely collapsed. Um, it's just a crazy industry where so many things can happen so quickly. You may think, the crypto industry is going one way for a long time, then all it takes is one change overnight and a lot can happen. It's an amazing place to be in. And as you said, you, you read, read the book in about 2016, 2017, you saw the potential. A lot of people didn't see it quite mu as much back then. So you're one of the smarter ones, must I say, for seeing the potential. You're, you're almost like a prophet for foreseeing into the future because you're onto it straight away which is really, really cool. And as for the people that you just mentioned, that got in at 2012 and they think, oh, you know, there's not much more that, it's, it's, it's not as early as, anymore. Well, back then there was not really no NFTs, no DeFi, no Metaverse, no GameFi. So I don't know what they're talking about, but they obviously don't have the same mentality that you have looking into the future and moving forward, which is really refresh, refreshing to hear. So that's, that's pretty cool. So back in 2017, Everybody was driving a Lambo, but things have changed a little bit this year, haven't they? <laughs> so, all right, cool. So without further ado, let's get into some juicy questions. So let's start easy. Ineri is listing on Huobi on the 28th of September. So basically, how, how come you decided to launch a new blockchain and list the token in the middle of a bear market? That's pretty ballsy. So I'd love to hear what you have to say about that so um i would just add something to that all good projects most of them if you see them if there's an infra technical level project yeah. backed by real technology they don't care if it's bull or bear market because mm. in the end it's about the use case the utility of the token and the utility of the of the blockchain um, there are projects which i would for you i will completely agree with you which you shouldn't launch in in bull uh, bear market which you have to wait for bull market where everybody is hyped up to buy but if you are an infra project and if you are a layer one blockchain on the top of the blockchain you can build so many things yeah. you don't you don't see the market condition you see the world roadmap of your technical project um and as long as the as long as the road mark is there and everything is 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 uh according to the technical roadmap you just 
launch the token in a way that you know that people would be uh, understanding your project and appreciate the value behind it. Mm -hmm. And if the token has a pure utility on the ecosystem, it's just going to grow. It's just a matter of time. It takes time. It's going to grow. And if you stabilize in a bear market where you said really like yesterday, it was a red day when we listed. But if you see, we did pretty good. So you, if you stabilize in this market, then in bull run, you are sky's the limit. So what has the reception been towards this idea, to, towards this execution of plan? So what was the general reception like? Were people worried? Were they scared? Were they just excited? What was the general consensus here? So there have been some reservations. Some guys said, you know, um, it's always good to, to um, list in bull market. Mm. And uh, in but bull most market? of the community, yeah, oh, okay. they said it's good to list in bull market. When the bull market comes, you guys don't have to list now. And there were a few people who said that, but most of our community um, was absolutely behind us. And they understand that there are, there are uh, technical milestones which we have achieved like public testnet is out then the main net is coming out then after the the testnet of the database system is coming out the first decentralized db in the world mm -hmm. and then the db will be launched and that's all will be happening in the next six months nice. so we have everything ready so they said okay to do that let's let's list the token let's have the community a, a part of the of the public sector community all the huobi customers who are there or everyone else who would join huobi to come on INR token and, and have a participation. So let's do that before we before we um, go on with all the technical roadmaps. Mm. Um, and we are we are so ready with the technology um, and also partnerships with different uh, other protocols and different big companies who would like to use the decentralized data management that it makes no sense for us to uh, to wait for bull run or something. It's just a technological pla platform. You know, we are here for a long term. It's not a hype and, and, and dumb project. We will be, I mean, the real value of the project you will see in around 18 to 24 months when everything is launched, when there are uh, collaborations by different governments and people start adapting the decentralization of data. Mm. May I have your permission, Doc, to give you my unprofessional and irrelevant opinion on this topic, on this matter? Sure, sure, go ahead. So I, I, I am honestly, I'm on your side with this and I don't think it's, wise to launch in a, bear, in a bull market, sorry, in a bull market. I don't, I don't think that's wise because the people who are saying this are obviously saying this from a more speculative standpoint. So they want to see instant pumps, right? Because the market's pumping, everything will go up with the market as well because everything is pumping. But that's pretty much the same as buying into something at the top as well. So if you were to launch in a bear market, for example, when everything is low, then there's a high probability that the people who will get involved into said projects will be getting in at a cheaper price in accordance to the bear market just before the bull run starts. And then that's when they'll see the real speculative profits, as we call them. So in other words, there's a saying, and you, you might have heard of this, the bull markets make stupid investors look smart and the bear markets make the stupid investors into losers and smart investors into winners so if i was to launch a project and i had the option of launching in a bear or bull market obviously i wouldn't want to do it at the start of a bear market of a bear run but honestly the way things are going the world economy is going to improve at some point it has been going down with inflation going up everything's been going down as we speak with the exception of the things that are tied to inflation because people are minimizing their risks so it's best to, in my unprofessional and irrelevant opinion, best to launch during these times before the bull, next bull run starts, because that's when we'll see the real super gains for the people who are looking at it from a more speculative standpoint. So the last thing you want to do is buy the top and then you know what happens when you buy the top. So it doesn't make sense to launch in a bull market that way. So you haven't launched at the start of the bear run either. We're sort of in the middle going to, into the, towards the end phase hopefully but um yeah but uh, definitely definitely a good time it's a good time and you know what as you said as well you made a very important point 18 to 24 months very important point here because a lot of people also forget very easily in this space that we have bitcoin halvings every four years and there's a lot of hype surrounding those which have a, a huge effect huge impact on the market not only in the lead up 
but post Bitcoin halving as well. And that is an approximately 18 months or so from now. So you raise an excellent point there. And again, a lot of people in this space forget about it. So usually what happens is going back into time, we have the hype about six months before the Bitcoin halving happens. The Bitcoin halving happens and then, and then we hear crickets. <laughs> That's just how it is. But then yeah. usually about 150 days after that event occurs, starts the next big bull run. So this is one thing a lot of people in the space keep forgetting. So you raise some excellent points here, really good points. And I'm really glad to hear you say this because it tells me that you really do have the right mindset and you do have a plan and you know exactly what you're talking about. So that's that's really comforting to hear. So how far along have you gotten with the project so far and what milestones are you most proud of? So <clears throat> the blockchain is, is, is completely ready. Yep. We have launched a public testnet a month ago. And a very proud thing was that uh, within three weeks of the testnet, we got 340 master nodes registered, which is nice. a huge number within less than a month. So the adaptability of the, of the technology is, is very high. Um, we did then again some changes into the testnet as per the, the feedback from the, the developers on the master nodes mm -hmm. and started again with a task system. So the, you can you can register as being a master node and then you have to finish a few tasks on there, a few tests of the blockchains. Um, and doing so, you will get uh, rewarded by binary tokens. So in the second phase of the testnet, we are hoping to cross somewhere between 500 to 1,000 master nodes register on our testnet, nice. which I think is huge. Um, and what it brings to is, which I'm, I'm, I'm and the whole technical team very proud of, is uh, when we will launch the mainnet from those no master nodes, around three to 500 master nodes will be for the start of mainnet. So you start a blockchain with around 300 to 500 master nodes. So that means the, the real decentralization the distributed ledger, the distributed network is in the place the very day you launch your mainnet. That's nice. a huge thing. I mean, if you see huge projects, I would not name even their net, the number of their nodes is below 500 still. And they are out there for, for four or five years wow. and they are in billions of dollars of valuation. Wow. So from technical part, I'm very proud of, of our technical team. Uh, we are three months well, I'd say three and a half months ahead of our roadmap, which we gave to the community. Beautiful. The, the testnet of the first decentralized database is coming out as well um, within this year. And yep. then the first quarter of next year, the full decentralized database, the first one in the world, is going to be launched. What that means, all decentralized applications in the world, doesn't matter on which chain they are, either on Ethereum or Avalanche or Solana, um, all of them are using a centralized database. So you can put a question mark behind each of them saying, hey, you are a decentralized application. You are mm. not supposed to use a centralized DB. So use binary DB. So the mass adaptability, uh, it will take time. But I, as I said, from 18 to 24 months, we will have a lot of mass adaptability of the DB. And every usage of the DB is driven by binary token. So everything that happens on the ecosystem will be driven by its own native token and the rest you can do the mathematics so the, the future seems good if if we deliver your target market is huge absolutely huge. huge this could be of interest to businesses companies all over the world in fact i don't see why any company mainstream or crypto wouldn't have an interest in your technology this could be massive Yes, because 50%, 47% to 52% of all centralized databases gets hacked. And that's why we are coming in and saying, well, blockchain-based, uh, distributed decentralized ledger system, no data gets ever hacked or lost. You could service for Google, for Yahoo, for news media everyone. companies, everyone, everyone. This Everyone. This could be absolutely even exchanges, massive. even even crypto exchanges, decentralized exchanges are using centralized database. True. Centralized exchanges are using centralized database because there isn't any other option. I mean, no offense to those guys, but nobody has worked into the data management space. So, 
Um, we would love to. I mean, people ask why nobody else is doing that, why you're the only one. So we don't know that. Mm. But we saw the potential, we saw the use case, and we saw the, the, the problems into the data where the hacks happen, and data is the most important part for a company. Mm. Just imagine, um, Darko, you have your own company, and me as a hacker, I get into your data, and I not only steal your data, but then I, with the delete command, I delete your data. Yeah. So you come back and you know, all your consumer data, everything is gone, mm. which we are there to, to actually prohibit if you come on the decentralized part, if you come on our ecosystem. You can well, actually manage your data. It's, it's funny you brought that up because just recently on our local news, the second largest telecommunications company in my country here just got hacked. Of the, their database just got hacked. 8 million customers' details got stolen, which is yep, really that scary. That happens again and again. Yeah, happens. really scary. So having said that your target market is absolutely massive and endless, literally endless, so partnerships would play a very important role, spe more specifically for your brand. So which of Inedi's collaborations do you feel are most relevant for the future? Of the company <clears throat> so we have i mean we have tied up with few companies but uh, the news um, is still not out it will be coming out in the next uh, i would say next few weeks mm -hmm. um, we have tied with this one very specific company which is a tech giant and they are one of the biggest countries biggest tech companies yeah and they have joined hands with us to actually have the mass adaptability of decentralized database. So that I would say for now is the biggest partnerships. But apart from that, we have around 12 other partnerships in the pipeline. So you have to, the, the community has to stay tuned with you and with Huobi and with our social media channels to get the news. So, so we are really working a lot. So who's this big company you speak of, can you say? <laughs> I, I cannot tell you the name because you have to tune in to, to, to do that. All right. What if, if you send me one Ethereum and I send you two back, will you tell me that? <laughs> you will get it without even sending Ethereum. <laughs> you, just to, you just have to have a little bit of patience and maybe we need to have a live show again. Oh, then definitely. Definitely, definitely. So, all right. Um, just quickly, it's listed on Huobi now. That's open? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm getting very excited about this. And I've been pronouncing Ineri wrong I'm, deliberately. I'm waiting for you to correct me because you've been calling it Inery. <laughs> so, yeah, so, well, we call it Inery, but yeah. if you spell it from English point, you can, I mean, a lot of guys say it Inery. But, okay. you know, Inery makes the project small and Inery shows the, shows the huge movement of the data part. Oh, I couldn't control my exotic accent. My apologies for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So your project is most often spoken as an upgrade of Web3. And you have raised some really important points. But how else do you think Inery, Inery will improve Inery. Web3? Is there anything else we've missed? Um... I, I didn't get you. Just once again, you had to ask the question. Oh, again. so your, your project has often been spoken as an upgrade of Web3. How will Inery improve Web3 if there's anything you've left out already? Is there anything you've left out? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I can give you a, it's a very relevant question. Um, we are a purely infrastructure project providing an infra for Web3. Why and how? Um, let me explain it to you. Yep. What is Web3? The core question, what is Web3? So Web3 is actually enabling or empowering the end customer um, who can control his uh, participation of internet, his online activities, and his data. Giving power to the people. Exactly. So if I'm the user, you are the user of internet, you're you doing any online activities, then you should be in control of that and you should be able to say, okay, this thing I can share with somebody and this thing not. Yep. What's happening in Web 2.0, whatever we do, um, we are incentivized by free applications. Is it TikTok, is it WhatsApp, whatever you name it, Instagram, but um, they are taking a lot of data from us. Mm. All big tech companies 
um, are providing us some tools, but in exchange, they are taking the most valuable uh, thing which we have is our data. It's our personal data, behavioral data, it's our uh, data which, which is business uh, related, everything, you name it. Yeah, And then they use the data in a, such a way that they actually uh, feed us a lot of things which uh, we shouldn't be taking or buying or e-commerce or whatever. Mm. It's just the manipulation through the data and through the knowledge they have about us. Um, and if you see, I mean, a lot of projects, tomorrow uh, Google or somebody says, well, we're going to ban, ban them. Uh, so we're going to take them down. Mm. And this is the power of the of the big tech companies in Web 2.0, which is completely against the principle of Web 3.0, where everything is open. Um, and everyone, a participant has a full control over his participation, and he is the owner of his participation. Mm. No big tech giant or a small tech giant can actually uh, um, give him the rules that you have to follow these rules. And if you don't follow, uh, we will take you out or we will not let you tweet or this and that. Mm. Uh, that's the whole fundamental of Web 3.0. Um, why Inri is very important in the infrastructure of Web 3.0, because we are providing an ecosystem um, at least in the data part, because we are data specific uh, a blockchain, where an individual has a full control of his data, whatever he puts on our ecosystem. If he has his private key, only he and himself is able to access the data, no one else. Mm. Of course, there is a, a, a smart contract, which we call a value contract algorithm, where which he can make on the blockchain and say, okay, I will want to have these three people a limited access to my data, but he remains in total control. Mm -hmm. And no one can hack the data, no one can access the data, no one can delete it or no one can touch it without his private key. Mm -hmm. It's like having Bitcoin. If you don't have the private key, you don't have Bitcoin and nobody can access it without private key. doesn't matter if it's a government agency, if it's big tech giants, it's the same part. And that's a part of Web3. That's where Inri is coming in and giving a platform for all developers around the world for the whole community, all big corporations, all blockchains which are existing. So we are cross-chain functionality to just be owner of their own data. Mm. Google won't like you very much, will they? Or will they, they will either love you or hate you, I think. What do you think? How do you feel? I think, no if we, uh, I think if we stay on our decentralization, Web 3.0 Pinnacle, they wouldn't love us mm. because we're creating something which is... Uh, which is denting in their profits because they cannot access the data of a user. And that's what but I the call user disruptive that, technology. Yes, and that's we are the soldiers of decentralization. You know? I like that. So. <laughs> I like that a lot. So, all right, Inuri hasn't just built a blockchain, but also a decentralized data system on top. So let's talk a little bit about some of the use, real world use cases here. So I, I did mention earlier a couple of examples and while we were talking, I also thought of a banking system maybe could incorporate this technology. Um, what, what other types of use cases could you share with us? Yeah, so um, health tech, health a tech. lot of data about health, uh, pharma. So all those clinical uh, mm. uh, trials, that are, they have a lot of data of different patients and that that can be uh, uh, used. FinTech, as you said, banking, but the full FinTech sector Mm. All DeFi applications can actually use a decentralized database. Um, every corporation which has consumer data. So, you know, as you have mentioned before, private data, our national ID number, our, our date of birth, our um, social security number, all these things um, are very sensitive data and it should actually belong to the customer. So uh, putting a, that kind of data on, a, on blockchain uh, saves a lot of trouble and makes it almost impossible to get hacked because you can compromise maybe one node but not the full decentralized ecosystem. Mm. Um, so the use cases um, starts from a normal consumer data and goes deep into uh, data analytics. So what the, the platform which we're doing is not data storage. Just let me put it, it correct. Data storage is a very important but a, a small part of the ecosystem it's actually the full data management system what that means that means you can actually uh, 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 run the queries on the data you can do data mining it's data analytics what we're talking about data visualization artificial intelligence 
based on the, the data. Mm. So everything which is happening now in Web 2.0 in the data world, INRI is providing a, a platform in Web 3.0 to be done that on decentralized path. A very challenging technological uh, um, innovation, but uh, thank God and thanks to all our, our partners and our community that we have been able to to, to reach the, the stone, milestone that we have uh, dwelt in. So, um, as you said in the beginning, uh, use cases are vast. Partnerships um, can actually virtually be done with any existing company. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So now, now that the project mission is clear, I think we need to understand what exactly is the token utility in Inery's ecosystem. That's a very, very important question. Mm. Because the utility of the token drives the value of the token and drives actually the i mean everything in the community about tokens sorry i just need to shift so there's no sun yeah. so <clears throat> let's start with the utility of the token yep. um so the token is the main nectar of binary infrastructure and ecosystem if you want to do any transaction on the blockchain you would need the token yeah if you would download the binary database you need token if you want to be node even it's light or a master node you need to stake tokens mm. if you run a query on your data which is stored on the blockchain you need tokens if you need to update the data add some more data you need token okay if you if you are a, a corporation or a, or another uh, blockchain and you are um, building a decentralized application, it um, doesn't matter on which chain, I'm not saying on binary only, um, you would need the database, you would need the token to download binary database. The amount of data which you put on the blockchain is again represented by the token. So you must have a number of tokens to have the storage space on blockchain. So anything you do on Inery blockchain or with Inery database, you must have to have the token. Sounds like I need to get me some tokens. <laughs> <laughs> Good time to, to get it now before the bull run starts. Exactly. And for the viewers who just joined and missed the beginning of the stream to find out exactly what we're talking about in terms of before the bull run starts, please go back and watch the start of the stream because we dwelt into that topic as well. Very important near the start of the stream. So was there anything else you wish to add with regards to the token utility in the ecosystem? Or was that it? So, yeah, so I think we, um, I have given more or less the fair idea that if you come on an ecosystem at any stage, um, trying to do anything with uh, within the ecosystem, you would need token. You would not go one step without the Inery tokens. It's a pure utility token. Um, there is no, uh, let's say, an outer parts of the things added to the token saying, hey, you know, we are trying to make it a utility or look, our token gives you that other additional utility. The whole infrastructure of the layer one blockchain and the, the layer uh, two, the decentralized database is everything going by the token. Mm. So you had the Huobi listing on the 28th of September, making it a huge milestone. What's next for Inery and why do you think your token will appreciate over time? Well, if I'll tell you that, you'll buy a lot of tokens. So. Oh yeah, definitely. So just give me good reasons so I can buy a lot of tokens. <laughs> so um, as I said, let's start from the from the basics. Yep. So the basics is we have a very strong tech team. What they have achieved in the last uh, almost three years we are working is uh, amazing in terms of the of the technical hurdles or the obstacles we had, because no one has done that before. You know, uh -huh. when we started, it was just ah okay. When some we were talking to somebody's like okay one another layer one, um, and I we told them guys. It's not about making a layer one. It's just about bringing an infrastructural ecosystem in Web 3.0 world where it's highly needed and there isn't anyone in the space. Um, we would love to have some more competitors on the space, but there isn't any. Um, I hope in the future it will change. So the technical platform is ready. 
We are not the company who are listing and now starting to build something. We have already built. The public testnet is out. The mainnet will be out very soon. We have companies waiting for mainnet launch so they can start building uh, different applications on the top of that, um, which will drive the value again for the token. Then, as I told you, and I, I refuse to tell you the name, we have already a huge partnerships done, mm-hmm. but he will get the names very soon. Um, so those partnerships will be coming and working hand in hand on um, the adaptability and the use case of the of the infra project. Then there are a lot of Web 2.0 big companies which are um, looking into us and want to have the secure uh, management of their data. So they will be using that. Then once the Android database is out, now that's where the, the roller coaster starts. And mm. it, I think it's going to go very up because um, what we're going to do is we're going to just go to every decentralized application in the world, which call them a, a DAP or all the decentralized exchanges. And we're going to just put, let's say, XYZ um, application. We're just going to put a question mark on, on the on behind them and say, guys, you are using a centralized DB. So either you use a decentralized DB or stop calling you a DAP. Yeah. Now that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be viral. So we will we are looking for a huge amount of technical adaptation, adaptation, at least in Web 3.0 decentralized applications. And all these companies and brands and whatnot will obviously need to buy the tokens for the utility aspect as well. Yes. If yeah. a decentralized application which is on Solana saying okay because we have built a lot of libraries of different different uh, programming languages mm. so that means the, the database you don't need to change if you have built something in python you can very easily adopt binary database um, and and leave the centralized db so you can come to decentralized db because we are providing you different libraries and sdks um, so what will happen is when they will adopt binary they need to have tokens they need to buy the tokens they need to stake the tokens they need to have the tokens in equivalent amount of data which they want to put on the blockchain. Mm. So it's the, the demand of the tokens is going to definitely go up and up the more and more projects come and adopt the, the, the DB part. I'm loving the sound of this. So for more information, where can the audience from the Huobi Global World go and visit? Well, we have a lot of information on our uh, website. Yep. And then we have a Telegram group where the lot of the whole community is constantly sharing information. Yep. There's Ainry official telegram group, official announcement, and there's Ainry community telegram group. There are two of those. Then we are on Discord, we are on Twitter, where we are very actively uh, telling news and partnerships which are coming on. Yep. Um, and of course, you know, staying tuned with Huobi because that's where the whole action is going now. So what's the website so we can have a look? Um, so the people can have a visit, have a exp- explore around a bit, What's the website? So the website is www.inery.io. Easy. So easy. easy. Inery.io. Yeah. And, or and, just Google Inery. Yeah, and you have all your social links there. People can just click on the official website and go to the Telegram, the Twitter, exactly. and everywhere else. Yeah. Exactly. The whole information about the team, what we are doing, our roadmap, white paper, everything is on the website. Oh, good. And to everybody watching, if this does sound of interest to you, and you do go to the website, I've said this a hundred times before, and I'll say it again. Please take the time to read the white paper. It's there for a reason. You might have a hundred questions in your head, and you want to visit one of their socials, the Telegram community, to ask these questions. But in most cases, you will find the answers to your questions in the white paper. That's what it's there for. It's the foundation of the ideology behind the project. Please take your time and read it. And if you don't like reading things on the screen, just print it out and read it on the paper. That's what I do too sometimes. But white papers are very overlooked by a lot of people. I cannot stress their importance enough. So check out the website, check out the white paper. And then if you have to join the Telegram community, ask for questions there. So have I missed anything, Doc? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, we have covered everything. And I'll just say to all who will be community and everyone, but guys, just join the Twitter or Telegram or, or somewhere our groups and just ask the questions. If something is not clear, ask the questions, uh, write to you. If they want to have more clarifications, we can do another live session. Yep. You know, we are there for the community and we are only successful if the participation and the community is behind us. It's a pure community-based project 
which is we said we are soldiers of decentralization so we decentralization is the is a, is the participation of the community in a project and i just want to add one more thing yep. um, from the first topic which we started uh, darko about the the why to launch now in the bear and bull market a very senior lady um, i was attending a conference um, as a speaker and she was speaking with me um, told me off the stage um, she said well um, doc um, i was asking her about the bull and bear market she said look in my experience um, bull market produces a lot of bullshit and bear market bears fruits mm. i like so that the focus should be in bear market I like that. I like that. So before we give this a wrap, is there anything else you wish to share with the Huobi global audience while we're here? Well, as said, um, I would be thrilled and I would um, actually request all the Huobi global audience to look into us, ask questions, be actively participate and write me directly on Telegram because it's not that, okay, the founder or the CEO is, I'm always available. Um, and just you know understand about us and you will see what we are trying to do it's a bit of tacky project but i think after today's show i'm sure a lot of people would have an idea what we are planning to do so De definitely definitely and as for this big mysterious surprise potential partnership that you've been teasing us with what how what kind of can you give us a time frame at least or you're not allowed to say that either for the announcement no i don't i, I can give you a time frame within october within october oh that's soon a, yeah interesting well this is definitely one project that is worth a look so i mean the opportunities could be huge and i'm not talking about a speculative standpoint here i'm talking about the technology itself like this could really 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 take off really really hard so you know the best of luck with you and your project and your team and hopefully everything goes the way you plan it to go which i'm pretty sure it will but definitely a project a project that is very interesting very interesting and hopefully we get get to see you back here in the future with some further news and updates and a bit a bit of crypto talk and see what else has progressed since our last meeting from today as well which is very exciting stuff all right so a big thank you to everybody in the huobi, huobi global live audience who are watching we've got 18,300 people watching this live stream and 177,000 likes so thank you to everybody who has smashed that like button Thank you to everybody contributing in the live chat box as well. And especially huge thank you to Doc, who's come and shared his time with us and given us an education and information on this project, which honestly, I hadn't really heard of much before until now. And the way you've explained it, it's, it's got me pretty excited. So I will definitely be reading the reading the white paper on the official website, inery, I-N-E-R-Y dot I-O. Was it dot, dot I-O you said? Dot I-O, yes. Dot I-O binary.io for more information and i will definitely be reading the white paper and looking further mm -hmm. into this project Doc, Michael, just uh, mm -hmm. um, just a quick thing came into my mind sorry sure, to, sure, to sure. interrupt you no, go for um, it, go for it. the reason the reason that you didn't hear about the project or a lot of people in here about the project is because we are so much focused on the technical part to build the technology and start the, uh, the adaptability of the technology instead of creating a hype or saying guys we are building this and that now it's a time when we are on Huobi that the whole audience of Huobi or all the participants of Huobi Global should know what this tech team is building. So we are more builders than, than marketing. I mean, you know, we, are, we have not been very uh, active in the marketing part. We just started now a week or so ago. But I want to thank again you for this amazing session, for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you all the Huobi Global, uh, um, Huobi Global community. We listed yesterday at 1300 UTC, so it's less than 24 hours. But the love which the Huobi Global Community showed us, the best. you can see on the chart. We have been really, really happy and thankful. We didn't expect that, and we are doing very, very good. I mean, much better than expectations as comparison to the efforts we put in marketing because we are a pure technical project. Mm. Um, I just want to thank all the Huobi Global people that they have given us so much love and support in the first 24 hours. Nice. Thank you. Really appreciate that. And Huobi Global, not just the team, but, but the people involved and the people in the live chat as well. Everybody associated with Huobi are just awesome. And I, I, I know I sound biased, but I've been in this space a long time since 2012. I've seen a lot, heard a lot, just like you. You've seen a lot, heard a lot as well. 
And I must say, it is really a fantastic place to be. It's just amazing. It's awesome, really awesome. But thank you for, I really appreciate those warm words. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And again, hopefully we get you back in the near future with further news and updates and announcements. And we, and we find out who that special <laughs> partnership is. <laughs> Awesome. So everybody watching, once again, please check out inery.io. That's I-N-E-R-Y dot I-O for more information and read the white paper. Awesome. All right, Doc. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a and good the, day. And good again, stuff. thank you to everybody else for tuning in. And until next time, please be safe, be healthy, trade wise, and as always, rock on.